one of these people are you. You've had a long day at school. Or was it the office? Maybe you were shopping. Now you are home. These people live in constant fear of a victim. In this place, people die so we can get mobile phones. You've heard it all before, haven't you? Children working as slaves to pay You the feel a mixture of sorrow and cynicism. This the world is Chicago richer than it has ever been, and yet there seems to be more poor people than ever. Because economies have been on the edge of a financial and economic precipice. You are falling asleep. You're going to have a strange dream. It starts with this thought. Poverty, wealth. Poverty, wealth. Power, Power. powerlessness, Power connected. There are bureaucracies and systems being built on the sufferings of others all the time. Behind uh, every single form of modern poverty, you find the use of force. Poverty isn't solved automatically by growth. It's difficult to work out exactly what is reducing poverty. Science and technology social housing, agricultural productivity, revolutionary movements, a bit of uh, free market ideology. The most important way of getting out of poverty is make, to make sure that everybody can earn their way out of poverty one way or another. There are ever greater contrasts. Slums spreading outwards and skyscrapers zooming upwards. Refugees fleeing across bridges and highways packed with new cars. Oceans full of container ships, camps full of starving families. You toss and turn in your sleep. You think while few people are starving, there is still a massive underclass servicing the rich. Why are they still there? What we now have is rules that from the rich for the rich have been developed. There is a very long queue in front of an embassy. You want a visa. You fill out a form that goes on and on, page after page. You give the form to a man who tears it up in your face. And now you are on an endless ocean, in a tiny boat. You are escaping from your poor country to a rich country. But as you look down, you see that the ocean is full of banknotes, flowing from your homeland towards the place where you are going. Die gesamten äh, Ausflüsse aus den armen Ländern werden auf ungefähr 1000 Milliarden US-Dollar geschätzt. Das entspricht ungefähr acht bis zehn Mal der gesamten offiziellen Entwicklungshilfe, die in diese Länder hineinfließt. Und ich glaube, dass eine Reform dieses Systems mehr zur Armutsvermeidung beitragen würde als die gesamte Entwicklungshilfe. And now you find you have that job in a rich country, in a rich company, an auction house. But you're just an unpaid intern. Your job is to carry out the paintings at the auction. This one is Edvard Munch's The Scream. The bidding is running into tens of millions. Every time the auctioneer brings down his hammer, you hear the painting scream and see another apocalyptic future. World recession, global warming, a virus with no cure. And then you wake up. It was only a dream. It's time to get up and go out. You are walking down a street in a modern city amidst a crowd. They are marching. There was an idea called trickle-down economics. If you could just get the economy to grow, 
everybody would, would benefit. Sometimes a rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, that's nonsense. It's not true. Remarkable increase in inequality. So it's not even stagnation we're talking about. We're talking about very marked declines of people at the bottom. You start off with a problem, and the minute you get the solution right, the middle classes and the rich pile in and take all the resources. The rich get richer while the poor uh, get poorer. When that becomes a widespread perception, that could have severe consequences for our economic and political stability. You turn a corner, you see a house. It's my house. Your house. These are all the things you own. All the things I own. And this is your mirror. My mirror, my mirror. And it's like a moment from a dream, except it's real. And now you are poor. I'm 